Making FPS arms is actually really easy. All you have to do is get some arms, then get a friend, Pete, shit. In the game I'm making, you might have noticed that there are a few FPS animations. I just want to say that I'm not an expert, but I hope these credentials can back me up just a bit. Also, if you look around, there really aren't any good resources on how to do this stuff. At least not for a smooth workflow of animating, then importing into a game engine like Unity. So even if you don't accept me as the animation god that I am, uh, you don't really have a choice. To get started making FPS animations, you're going to want to open up Blender and make an arm and a weapon rig. I'll be using my arm and weapon rig from Partisan, which I'll have a link to in the description if you want to follow along. Now, you're going to want to keep the arm and gun armatures separate. I've seen a bunch of videos saying to merge these together, which if you're working on a game where you know for sure you only have one weapon, that's fine. But if you're planning on having multiple weapons, the hack will make your armature really messy really fast, since you'll have your arms and all your weapons just under one game object. So ideally you have a separate blend file for all your weapons and then your arms. Then in your arms file, you could go link, navigate to your weapon, then import your weapon as a collection. This ensures if you want to make any changes to the weapon in the future, you can sync those assets without having to reanimate the weapon every time. And now that it's in your project, you can right click here and click make library override. This allows you to pose the weapon in the arms file, whereas before Blender would only let you make changes in the original weapon file. Also, to see the armature through the mesh, you can click on the armature tab, viewport display, then check in front. You can also change the bone model here. I like B-bone, but you could use whichever armature shape you like. Control Alt S scales bones, by the way. And now that your rig's all set up, we're good to start animating. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is go to your weapon model and go to pose mode, then go to bone modifiers and add the child of modifier. This is how we're gonna get the weapon to stick to the hand. Then just assign the arms armature, then select the bone you want the weapon to stick to. After that's done, you're finally ready to animate. For most cases, you're gonna to wanna to go to the action editor. This section here is the current action that the armature is playing back. You can name actions here, then make sure, <laughs> I mean, make sure that this little checkbox is ticked. As otherwise, if you close Blender, the action won't be saved. Depends on what weapon you're working on, but each action should, well, be an action, like a reload, a shoot animation, or an equip animation. When importing the FBX into Unity, you'll see that Unity actually recognizes each action in the model importer. So keeping good naming conventions and cleanliness is really important here. Now, this tutorial isn't really about animation principles, more about the workflow, but let's just say that we want to tackle a shoot animation. I usually start with key poses, the poses with the most extreme positions and rotations. Then I make sure the timing feels good, then just do a couple of passes and in-betweens and boom animation. For the sake of this tutorial, I made a shoot animation and an idle animation. Also, make sure to make matching actions for the weapon as well, though you don't really have to animate anything as everything's handled by the child of modifier. But once you're done your animations, select your arms, then head over to file, export, then copy these settings. Check selected objects so that only whatever you have selected is exported. We'll export the weapon into a separate file. Then select FBX unit scale and check apply transform. This makes it so that scaling is consistent between Blender and Unity. You can then save these settings as a preset here so you don't have to manually reapply them every time. Then just hit export and do the same thing for your weapon. Then open up Unity and drag the arms and weapon into the scene. When you're making a game, you'd obviously have a script to spawn the weapon and whatnot, but for right now, we're just gonna make a simple animation testing script. Just add a reference to both animators, then in the update loop, set trigger on both animators to shoot when the left mouse button is clicked. Now just attach the script to the arms and assign both the weapon and arm animators. Then if you run the game and click, you'll see the arms playing the animation, but oh no, what's going on with the weapon? Well, if you look at the exported weapon model, you'll see that after the first animation, the weapon doesn't follow the arms. And if you add back to Blender, you can see why. As when you export the weapon with its child of bone modifier, Blender doesn't actually go for each animation and get the correct baked keyframes, but rather just uses your selected arms action as the reference for the modifier. To get around this, you can actually bake the keyframes manually before exporting. So first, just select an arm action and the matching weapon action. Then select the weapon armature, hit F3, and search bake action. This opens a baking menu. Then set the correct end keyframe, just whenever the arms stop moving. Select visual keying and overwrite current action and hit OK. Now that your animation's baked, go to the start of the weapons animation and keyframe the child of modifier's influence to zero. Since the modifier is now baked into the keyframes, it's essentially applying it twice, which messes up the animation. Then just do the same thing for the rest of your weapon animations. Make sure to swap the selected arm action and matching weapon action, and to keyframe the child of modifier's influence back to one at the start of the animation. Then bake again. 
And now, if you export the weapon with the preset we made earlier, you'll see that the weapon's animations are fixed. Also, side note, if you ever want to edit an animation, you'll have to select all the weapon's baked keyframes, delete them, and key the child of modifier's influence back to one at the start of animation. But that's pretty much it. If you play both animations at the same time, they'll now sync up and work together. You can now easily go from Blender to Unity and create hundreds of animations with hundreds of different weapons. You can also easily carry this method over to third-person character animations, by the way. Uh, it's not just restricted to FPS arms. And if you have any questions, you could ask me in the comments below. There are also project files available in the description. By the way, fellow game developers, this video is sponsored by Blue Ocean Games, but don't skip ahead, this is really cool. They're currently running a game incubator where you can submit a game to potentially be funded with over $300,000 in funding to the winning teams. The submission deadline is September 22nd, and there are two tracks that you can submit to. If you don't have a playable game, you could just submit an idea through the idea only track, which is perfect if you've always had a game idea that you'd love to see get made. All you need to do is explain your idea well and create a 60 second horizontal and 15 second vertical video that shows how the game would play. With the prize being $1,000 to option the idea, then $25,000 if a development team gets picked to make your game. Or alternatively, if you're currently working on a game that hasn't been commercially released yet, you can submit it to the in development track where you again have to make both the 60 second and 15 second videos, but you can do so with actual gameplay with $1,000 going to the top pick and $100 going to the nine other picks. And more importantly, talks with Blue Ocean Games to secure funding for it. This is a huge opportunity to get your game out there and make it a reality. So check out the Rising Tide Challenge through the link in the description. And thank you so much to Blue Ocean Games for sponsoring this video. But anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, there will be a new Partisan devlog soon. Um, I've got some really, really cool stuff planned. So keep an eye out for that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.